In this video, I want to go over the next smaller number with the same digits problem on Code Wars. And what it wants you to do is, it's going to pass you a number in, and it wants you to find the next smallest number. So, using the same digits. So, say it passes as 21, the next smallest number using the same digits would be 12. If it gave us 2,071, the next smallest number would be 2,017. Okay, now there's a few different situations in where we can't find the next smallest number. One is if they pass us a single digit integer. We obviously can't arrange that in such a way that we get a smaller number. If the number they pass us is in ascending order already, there's no possible way to arrange it such that we get a smaller number. And um, we also can't return numbers that begin with zero. So if we find the next smallest number and it starts with zero, that is invalid and we must also return negative one. Now there's a four step algorithm to solve this problem and I'm going to show you how to do it on the blackboard. We're going to start out with the number 4,365,789 and the way we do it is we start from the rightmost integer and we iterate to the left until we find the next number until the next number is greater than the number before it. So if we start at 9 and we go to 8, 8 is smaller than 9, so that's that's not what we're looking for. 7 is smaller than 8, 5 is smaller than 7, however 6 is greater than 5, so we're going to mark 6. After we find that number for step 2, what we need to do is we need to iterate to the right from that number until we find the next smallest integer. Now, you can just look at it until 5 is the next smallest, but if there was like um, a 4 and a 3 and a 2, 5 would be the next smallest, even though 4, 3, and 2 are also smaller than um, 6. So what we do from here, once we find these two numbers, we find this 6 and this 5, we swap them. So we, I'll swap it right here for you. So 4, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Once we've swapped them, what we do is the position where we found 6, we sort the array from that position plus 1, so from 6, all the way to the end of the array in descending order. So what that will look like, like is 9, 8, 7, 6, and then this will remain the same as 4, 3, 5. And that is the 4 step, step algorithm to find the next smallest number with the same digits. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to take this integer n and convert it into a list of integers because integers by themselves are not iteratable. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create an, a list called number and we're going to set it equal to, we're going to use some list comprehension. We're going to say int i for i in string n. Okay, so now we have a list of integers. Next we need to take care of all possible scenarios where we can't find a smaller number. Um, that will be if the length of the number is equal to 1 or if it is sorted in ascending order. Because if it's sorted in ascending order, it's already the smallest possible number using those integers. So, or number is equal to sorted number. If any of those are the case, we're going to return negative 1. Okay, now we need to start our algorithm. Step one is to start iterating from the rightmost digit until we find a number that's greater than the previous digit. So we're just going to start with a for loop and we're just going to say, sorry, I'm used, I've am i been using Java so much. We're just going to say for i in range of the length of number, so the length of number minus one because we're using the indices down to zero and the step will be negative one. What we need to do is we need to check to see if the current element is less than the element right behind it. And if that is the case, we need to mark that element because that is the first element we found that's greater than the one behind it. So what we can say is if number of i or the current element is less than number of I minus 1 and since we're going from right to left the one right behind it is actually kind of the one right in front of it if you think about it so 
if that is the case, if the current element, what we need to do is we actually need to create a, uh, a variable. And this variable we're going to call position. So we're going to initialize it to the length of number minus 1 to the, the index of the very last element. And what this variable is going to do is we're going to use it, just like we did on the blackboard, to mark that element because we're going to need to use that in the future. So we'll say position minus equals 1 to mark it, and then we'll break. However, if that isn't the case, we still need to do position minus equals 1. And the reason being is every time we move one position, we need to subtract from our position uh, variable. And then whenever we find, whenever this case is true, we'll do it again, and then we'll break. And then this position variable will be the index of what we're trying to find here. Okay. So now we have marked that. Next, what we need to do is we need to start iterating from that position variable we just found or the index we just found all the way to the end of the list. And we're searching for the next um, smallest number. And the way we're going to do this is we can just say for i in range of starting from the position, because we need to start, start from there and go to the to the end, so to the length of number. What we need to do is we need to check to see if the current element is less than number position or what the position of the element that we found here. So if the current element, so the number of i, is less than number of position, However, that's not enough to find the next smallest number. What we need to do is we need to create a, another variable, and we're going to call this um, next smallest. Next smallest. And we're going to initialize it to float of negative infinity. Okay. So what we're going to say here is if the current element is less than the number position, but it also has to be smaller than the next smallest. So and the current element, yeah, current element is, um, sorry, greater than the next smallest. What we're going to say is next smallest is equal to the current element. So next smallest is equal to number of i. So say we found the next smallest right here. If we ever found another number that's greater than the current element and less than this right here, that means that we found the next smallest um, number and we need to update it like this. But we also need to find the index of that number because we're, we need to use the index of position and the index of this next smallest number to swap them. So we're going to create yet another variable and we'll just say um, NSC for next smallest counter or yeah we'll, just, we'll say yeah we'll say NSC is equal to we're going to initialize it to the same thing float of negative infinity okay so we also need to store that so we're going to say NSC is equal to I, so now we have the ind index of that position. Next we need to swap them, and that's really easy. We could use a helper function, or since we're using Python, it's a very, very simple method to do. We can say number of position, comma, number of NSC is equal to the reverse of what we just wrote, so number of NSC, comma, number of position. Okay, so we swap them. Um, from here, what we need to do is we need to sort from the index where we found k plus 1 to the end of the list. So from this position here to the, from that position plus 1 to the end of the list. So the way we're going to do this is we're actually going to create a separate list 
And this list is going to contain every number that we need to sort. So from position plus one to the end of the list. So we're just going to say uh, numbers two is equal to um, number from position plus one plus one to the end of the list. Once we've done that, all we have to do is sort them. So numbers two dot sort. Once we've sorted them, we need to replace these sorted elements with the non-sorted elements in our original number list. Okay, because these, these contain uh, from position plus one to the end of the list sorted, but from position plus one to the end of the list is not sorted here. And so that's what we need to do. We need to replace them. And the way we're going to do that is we're just going to say for i in range of the length of numbers 2. And the, the reason we're doing length of numbers 2 is because the length of numbers 2 is the number of elements that we'll re be replacing in our original number list. What we're going to say is number of i plus position plus 1 is equal to numbers 2 of i. And what this is doing is it's taking, this is our sorted list um, from, K, from position plus 1 to the end. So for the very first element, so it'll be, for, for the very first iteration of this for loop, it'll be 0. So for the first element, it'll replace position plus 1 because this will be 0 plus position plus 1. So from position plus 1, the very first element in this one will replace this. And then the second element we will, will replace from there on, for so on and so forth. You see what I mean. So that's what that's going to do. Once we've done that, we have a list of numbers that we need to return as just numbers. So what we can do is we need to use some more list comprehension. Um, we need to convert this into a list of strings. So we're just going to say um, number is equal to string x, sorry about that, string x um, for x in number, okay, and then from here we need to use a join method, I'll tell you what it does after I use it, so dot join number, so right now our number list is a list of strings, we want to combine these strings into one single string. What this join method does is for every element in this number list, it puts them together with this in the middle. So if this was a space, it would just be one, it would just be a string with a bunch of spaces. So we just want one string, no space, and that's what that is. So it's easy to convert one string into an integer. All we have to do is return and s. However, if you remember, there's over. If you look over here, there's going to be some where if you sort them, um, the next smallest number will actually start with a zero. So what we need to do is we want to return uh, int s if and only if. So if s of zero, so the beginning of that string. If it does not equal zero, however, if it does equal zero, we want to return negative one. So let's test this. Sorry about that. We got to sort in descending order like we did on the blackboard. So what I'm going to do is sort, and we're going to just say reverse equals true. Reverse is equal to true, and then this should test should work. Okay, that passed, and then we attempt it. Okay, all 524 test cases passed. Um, so that is the next smaller number with the same digits on Code Wars. I hope that it was helpful, and if you learned anything, I would appreciate it if you liked, commented, and subscribed.